Hello and welcome to Strelkomania. Here are the timestamps for this video. Skip through as needed, and most importantly, enjoy. This is 3D printed origami based on the Mura Ori or map fold, a tessellation of exactly the same parallelogram with mountain and valley folds that lets you take a large surface area and compress it into a significantly smaller one. And basically, I want to turn this into a business card. You might be wondering, of all things, why take this as inspiration? Well, this year I'm attending and presenting at Rapid TCT on the topic of 3D printed origami in the world of robotics. So I figured that this kind of idea would quite suit the reason why I'm going and the need for business cards. This was an idea that just popped into my mind like five minutes ago. So I thought we could try this together and see See if it would work. I already have the CAD model for this base tessellation so I'm going to only use part of it and try to emboss text on each of the parallelograms. Let's see if it works. So basically I have this CAD model I'm going to start with. It is from a research paper I published a couple months ago. If you're curious about the paper this is the title and I'll link it down below but I'm thinking of basically just using part of this and then adding text to it. I did take a screen cap of this and basically planned out how I want to put my text. I feel like the smartest way is just to put a link tree link on here and let the person know with the business card that there's no spaces. So basically the idea is to just put my link tree address on the business card. I feel like that just makes the most sense since I can put my LinkedIn, my YouTube, my research papers, basically anything on that one page. I think a QR code would be just too complex for this and my handle is like different for every social platform I'm on, including my email, so that would have just been too much to fit on the style I'm thinking. So I took the screen grab, kind of mapped out how I want to make my letters on each of the parallelograms and this gives me the excuse of revamping my link tree so knowing that I'm going to go into this first sketch so I need one two three four rows I'm going to basically get rid of these top ones just to make it more manageable on my end when I'm editing so that leaves us with this this is approximately the size of a business card I'm going to do a cutout of the letters instead of an extrude just because considering how this folds I think extruding the letters would interfere with the origami itself this next part I'm just gonna speed up of me making the letter sketch Okay, so actually I'm going to need to further modify the E's, the O, and the A, and the D because it has parts that float. Okay. I'll first do the model that doesn't cut all the way through. And then I'll duplicate this workspace and then modify the letters for the ones that have the like floating element. This is the version with the letters cut through. I think it looks really cool, but I'm now coming to the realization that people who get this business card might be confused by these blank panels thinking they're empty spaces. So I don't know if it'll be enough for me to just tell the person no spaces or if I should write like no spaces on the back of this. 
I think I'm just going to print these tests and figure that out later, to be honest. Okay, so now I'm in Prusa Slicer. I'll be able to print the one millimeter letter cutout and the through hole letters together because they are only going to need two materials, the flexible material and the PLA. So the flex material I use is not exactly TPU, it's by I think Cicada 3D, it's called their X920, and it's a mix of PLA and TPU, so it has slightly different properties. It has a shore hardness of A89. If I slice these, I get a better idea of what we're working with. So the orange layers will be printed in the flexible material, and the green layers will be printed in the PLA. I've gone ahead and enabled ironing to get crisper letters, so I'll show you if I disable ironing. The letters don't look as nice for the full cutout one. You can see there's voids in the toolpath, which I'll see the flex material underneath slightly. So enabling ironing for the top surface will definitely improve the aesthetics. I am printing with a generic PLA profile, but I went ahead and modified the temperature filament settings. The X920 flex material, its data sheet gave a range between 220 to 245 degrees Celsius. I print on the hot end and increase the flow rate to get nice full layers. It's pretty easy to under extrude flexible material and then I set the bed at 50 degrees Celsius. It's recommended to be at least 40 degrees or higher for the flex material and then I print the first few layers of PLA on top of the flex material at this high melting temperature to fuse the two different materials together and then I'll drop it to about 220 for all the other layers. So I'll print this together. It's about three hours including the ironing. So slice this then our first layer change will happen here. Then our next layer change will happen when we start to see the letters, which will be here. How many layers is that? Two layers. This is a three color business card. It takes an hour and 26 minutes. And I did also enable ironing again. I think it's kind of cool too because you can see the direction of the layers compared to the top and then the one underneath in green are different. So it might give a nice textural effect as well. All right, so let's get printing. I'm really excited to see how these turn out. So it is the next day and I printed the these prototypes, one of the through hole and one of the two material print, and they look pretty bad. <laughs> I'll be very honest. First of all, my filament needs drying. It's really stringy, but my workaround is that I'll hit this with the heat gun and most of the stringing will disappear. The second thing is that the ironing doesn't look all too good for some of the letters, especially the ones with like the E and the A with the small floating elements of the letter. So what I'm going to try differently is the three material one and see if that looks any better. The triple extrusion one just came off the build plate and it looks so much cleaner. Whoa, I am totally obsessed with this design. Maybe I'll try some other colors. The TPU actually has channels for indicating which is a mountain and which is a valley fold. So basically, once you have the card printed, you have to zigzag fold it like this and then kind of collapse it and it'll remember the shape. How fun is that? <laughs> An origami business card. That was 3D printed. I love this. As you can see from the close-up of this print, the surface looks significantly better than the red tests. I did keep ironing enabled, which made these letters look so crisp. I think the contrast between the black and white looks awesome as well. When I'm printing the flexible material on the bottom, I do increase the flow rate from 95 to 110, and I'm printing at 245 degrees Celsius for the nozzle. So I think one trick that definitely helped this look better was decreasing the printing temperature of the PLA to 215 for every PLA layer except the first one. The first layer that was printed directly on top of the flex material I kept really hot to improve how well the two materials bonded to each other, but for every other layer I printed the PLA at 215 degrees Celsius and decreased the flow rate from the 110 I had for the flex back to the 95. So I think that definitely helped. I also printed the white layers 
at 75% speed. So in total, this print was an hour and 43 minutes, including two material changes, which is kind of lengthy for a business card, but the uniqueness of this is totally worth that print time. I hope you enjoyed this little impromptu video. It marks number two for my CAD time series where I make things in CAD and try to 3D print them. If you like what you see, subscribe for more in the very near future. And if you're at Rapid TCT this year, don't be afraid to say hello if you do see me. If you have any ideas for wacky business cards or how I could have improved this design, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for your time and catch you in the next one.